here's what net signed area says. It says the area that's above the x-axis counts as positive area. Area below the x-axis counts as negative area. That's just how this area works. It says this would all be a positive area and a positive area, but this would have a negative area. Now, in order to figure out total area, I'm going to show you how to do that uh, in a couple more lessons. But right now, just know that when we're calculating area from one point to another, it is including this as being positive, this as being positive, and this, it would count as a negative area. It would subtract from the two positive areas. Are you, are you following me on that? So the area you, you get with, with, with doing this method, even if, it doesn't, even if you don't have a graph of it, even if you don't know what it looks like, here's what it's doing. It's saying the total area is the positive areas minus the negative area. Or take, I'm sorry, the, the area above the x-axis and taking away the area below the x-axis. That's what that actually means. It's basically the difference between the areas above and below the x-axis. The difference between the areas above cumulatively and the areas <laughs> below cumulatively of the x-axis. Is symmetry a factor? Not really. You can't, I guess it could be. It's found exactly the same way. So the, the area formula that I created with you guys, remember the area formula that I created with you guys? Hopefully you've been using that. It's the limit with that sum. That, that doesn't change. This is, when I said area, what I meant was net signed area. I didn't mean total area. Well, we'll talk about that later. So when you're calculating an area like this, which is basically what we've been doing for the past couple days, <coughs> Also, for those of you who have been doing your homework, do you realize that this is in the book represented as C sub K? Mm -hmm. You've seen that as well, right? It means the same thing, right? So I could use that interchangeably. That is net signed area. What we've been doing is net signed area. Let me show you an example of this so you can kind of get a, an illustration of what I'm talking about. Would you like to see that? Mm -hmm. We're going to do one kind of quickly. We're going to go through it very fast because the process doesn't change, but I want to show you at least uh, one time. Okay, we're going to find the area of f of x under f of x equals, what did I say, x minus 1, on the interval 0 to 2 with left endpoints. That's what we're going to do. Hey, what's the first step? I think I gave it to you. First step, number 1. Okay, let's find delta x. So I'm going to outline all the steps for you just like I did before. So delta x. In our case, delta x is, how do you find delta x? Come on, people, help me out. Minus a over n. 2 minus 0 over n. It should have an n in it. 2 over n. That's always your first step. You've got to have that before you go any further because the next step uses delta x. The next step is you've got to find c sub k or xk dot. Whatever notation you prefer, I don't care how you do it. I've called it xk dot in the previous lessons. Uh, the book will call it c sub k. Would you like me to use c sub k so you kind of <coughs> see that? Okay, I'll use C sub K if you like. So the next is find C sub K. Left end Using left endpoints, C sub K says this. A plus K minus 1 delta X. That's what C sub K would say for, for you. Didn't I give you those formulas last time? Yeah. Okay, so you look up the correct endpoint, whether it's, or, whether it's left or right or perhaps a midpoint and you use the appropriate formula. You with me? Then you fill out everything that doesn't 
have a K. The K is going to stay. There's nothing you plug in for K. You're going to use that because your summation is using K. Okay? Okay minus 1? Whatever. Um, so in our case, C sub K is, what's your A? A is where you start. What's your A, folks? Come on. Plus, what do I plug in for that K? Nothing. You're going to use that later on because you're going to be basing your summation notation on your K, right? You'll have a formula for that later. It has to have a K. It probably, well, not have to, but it's most likely going to have a K. K minus 1. Now, your delta X, this is why we did this. Delta X is 2 over N. So C sub K, 0. 0 does nothing. You have... Two K minus one. Don't distribute over N. Don't distribute, and I'll tell you why later. You just have to re-factor out anyway if you do distribute. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Good deal. Basic, basic, right now. Uh, what's step number three? Come on, we're on a roll. Let's uh, define the function of C sub K. Good. Sure. Or xk dot, which is what we used before uh, to show the arbitrary point. I like the xk dot because it means arbitrary. That's why I showed it to you initially. But the c sub k says the same thing. It says, uh, can you find out using our arbitrary point what the function is going to look like? What is the function, ladies and gentlemen? No, the function. x minus 1. So I'm supposed to take c sub k and plug it into that. You with me? That says f of <coughs> 2 k minus 1 over n, which means that I'm going to have, well, if our function is x minus 1, it says 2 k minus 1 over n minus 1. Which rich hand feel okay with that so far? I guess you could have distributed, we might do that now. There's a couple ways we could do this problem, uh, if you'd like. Probably the easiest way would be to combine everything right now. Get one fraction out of it. So, what's the next step after that, after we found our function? Do what now? Multiply by that deck. Aha. Right now we have this, this, okay, we've got our function. The next step, step number four, is you're supposed to put this in your summation, right? One to n. You're supposed to make that. You're supposed to say, okay, I know my delta x, I can plug it in. I now have my f c sub k, I can plug that in, and then we'll take the summation, try to work that on out, and see what we get out of it. Now you have to be okay with that one. Let's plug that in together. What goes in place of the f of c sub k? <coughs> well, what is your mumblings? What are you saying? That. The function of c sub k. Very good. Yes. <laughs> the function of c sub k. Come on, Leonard, it's right there. Sure, just like that? Parentheses is good. We need that. Yes, you don't want to miss your delta x. That's important. Especially for us, our delta x is 2 over n. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this so far? So far. Yes, everybody? So you're okay that where we got the delta x, right? B minus A over N, that's just going to be 2 over N. You okay with the C sub K? That's XK dot, the same thing. That means that you're going to use a formula there. It's going to be either left, right, or mid. We have left in this case. That's why we use this formula. Remember that the right would have no minus 1. The mid would have minus 1 half. And you do the same exact thing. We figure that out by inserting our delta X. Then we take this value, our C sub K, to plug it into our function. That's right here. And we're going to get... 
this minus 1 for a function of c sub k. That's why we have that right there. That's where the minus 1 is going to go. It's not magic. It's because I have x that treat, that's my, treated my, as my x minus 1. Got it? Then we plug everything in. We got our function of c sub k. Oh, that's here. Times our delta x. We got our delta x from right there. And now we're good to go. What now? Well, now you work with it. Now you do some algebra. Probably have to distribute that. You do have to distribute this one. So we're going to get Stick with me here, folks. 4k minus 1 over n squared minus 2 over n. Are you okay with that? At this point, you have, well, the next one's not an option, but the one after that, you're going to have an option. The next thing you do is you break up those two sums. Do you see how we can break up the sums by subtraction? That's always legal with subtraction and addition. So here you'd go, okay, summation notation k equals 1 to n. This minus this. Are you still okay so far? Yeah. You sure? At this point, you do have options. Your options are this. You could distribute the 4. You could distribute the 4 and then separate those fractions and make two more sums. You could do that. That's option number 1. That's a decent option. Option number 2 is, notice how this and this are not based on k. You could pull those out. And then you could separate the k minus 1. You could do that as well. Just make sure that you have a bracket around the whole thing. That way you don't miss anything about it. Are you seeing what I'm talking about here? So that option's up to you. Which, what do you want to do? Do you want to distribute right now? Or would you rather pull this stuff out? If you want to break it up, why don't you try it? Some of you who, who feel like distributing and then breaking it up, go ahead and do that. You pull this out? Okay, we can do that too. That's probably the way I'll choose to do. So I'm going to look at this one. I'm going to say, all right. Well, I know this is 4 over n squared. And right here, I'm going to put a bracket around this so I don't forget it. I can't forget that. I'm going to group that to say, yes, that's the sum of that whole thing still. Minus, oh, well, wait, wait a second. How about that? What can I pull out of the one 2 over n? One <laughs> Say what? One what about the 2? Oh, yeah. 2 out 2? You'd factor it and get pretty messy. I would, wouldn't recommend that. Okay? Because th this is different. I probably messed up on the word. Okay. <laughs> you can't combine that right now. Can you make it that far, though, algebraically? The next part is make your sums something you can do with. This